Good afternoon and welcome to St. Edward's on this 13th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Would you please stand? Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Hear the love of Christ shall in divisions all are welcome all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true. Where all God's children dare to seek to dream God's reign anew. Here the cross shall stand as witness and as symbol of God's grace. Here as one we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. We ask God's blessing upon our assembly. Uh, I was just asking Deacon Jim if the dust cloud had arrived, and he told me it's been here all day. Um, <laughs> Um, I just thought it looked like it was going to rain. So um, hopefully that won't be a major event. We have enough to deal with right now. We are blessed today, though, to celebrate our faith in God, to acknowledge his mercy and our need for it as we now call upon the power of God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you call us to die to self and sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive us when we fall and repent. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us life through the blood of your cross. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shunem, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it with, for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Alicia arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Alicia asked, can something be done for her? His servant, Gehazi, answered, yes, she has no son and her husband is getting on in years. Alicia said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Alicia promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. Israel, our King, 
Forever I will sing, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord, forever I will sing. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through, through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in the newness of life. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we also, we also shall live with him. We know that Christ was raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. Whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man of reward. And whoever gives only a cup of water to one of these little ones to drink, because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he surely will not lose his reward. 
the gospel of the Lord. Within the readings this weekend, there are two things that jumped out at me. One is opening the door to God, and the other is that of receiving. In the first reading this weekend, we hear of a woman who would open her door to their prophet Elisha. We are not given the woman's name, but we do know she is a woman of influence. She is much aware of the prophet Elisha and that he is a man of God. She and her husband befriend him. They have set up a place in the house for him and his servant to stay when they come into town. For the kindness they have shown him and his servant, Elisha wants to reward them with something. Elisha asked his servant if he knew of something that the woman wanted. The servant mentioned that her husband is getting on in years and they do not have a son. Elisha calls the woman and tells her, that she will be fondling a son, a baby boy, in a year. Not being familiar with this scripture passage, I felt compelled to read on for the rest of the scripture that we do not hear today of the woman and Elisha. The woman knew that due to her husband getting up in years, that would be a challenge. And she tells Elisha, you are a man of God. Do not deceive your servant. Her son would grow healthy, but he contracts some type of disease and he dies. She went looking for Alicia. Her husband tried to convince her not to go, but she was going, she was not going to let anything stop her. She said it is all right. When she finally located Alicia, she literally grabbed him by the feet and told him, did I not ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, Do not mislead me. To her faith, her persistence, Elisha would go with her and through the power of God would bring her son back to life. For those who are familiar with Paul Harvey, he would, at the finish of his daily commentary, would say, now you know the rest of the story. It's been going on 14 years ago when we were blessed with our first grandson, whom we thought was a healthy little boy. All seemed wonderful in the world, but like the boy in the first reading, things spiraled out of control fast. Four days later, our Jude was gone. Oh, how, how, how we prayed. And I can guarantee it, if we knew running a thousand miles to have someone to come and placed our hands on Jude to bring him back, we would have done it. I have no doubt there could be individuals here at St. Edwards that can relate with the woman in our reading today. The first line of the gospel kind of makes you want to stop and scratch your head. God blesses us with friends and family. How could it be possible that to love them makes us not worthy of God? We all know the pain of losing a loved one. It is when we are unable to let go and let God have them back is when we love them more than we love God. In the gospel this weekend, Jesus is laying down what we need to do on that road to where he will meet us if we let him. He is telling us not to let things get in our way of having a relationship with him. Jesus had a way of taking commandments and calling his followers to a higher standard. Jesus goes so far as to say, whoever loves father, mother, son, or daughter, more than him is not worthy of him. And the first commandment that God gives to Moses was not to place other gods before him. The Israelites had just came out of Egypt, a land of people and men of many gods. It didn't take long for them to fall into the habit of worshiping false gods. We may not be worshiping golden calves as the Israelites did in the desert, but we may often find many things that can make, that we can make more important than our relationship with God. Aside from family members and loved ones who are so important in our lives, there are so many things created by man that can get in our way of putting God first. 
To be able to allow God to grow in us, we have to put these things that get on our way on the back burner to allow our relationship with God to grow. My dad had a good understanding of this message of Jesus. He emphasized and lived this by stressing the importance of placing God first, spouse second, then children. All other things would fall in place by keeping the right order. We, along with a few other couples in our parish, work with couples preparing for marriage. So often, our culture stresses the importance of a 50-50 relationship, a relationship of give and take. Those of you who have been married for a few years may be able to attest to the fact that marriage and relationships are not always a 50-50. Sometimes they're more like 70-30 or 20-80. And the idea of give and take really is a give and receive. The word take indicates that what is being taken is not being given freely. Jesus challenges his disciples to consider the reward that they want to receive. A profit reward, a righteous man's reward, or the reward that comes from receiving him and the one who sent him as a result of caring for those of the least among them. So the question is this. How many of us here would open our door to receive a stranger? It comes down to having the same faith as our woman in our first reading. Through her faith, she knew who Elisha was. God came to her through Elisha, and receiving him, she received a gift of her son. I guess you could say that God put her through a test to see if she would do what she would do to keep her son. She chose the correct path. We need to be like our woman in the first reading. We need to open up our doors to those in need, no matter their social status. We have to place our faith into the hands of God. It is when we allow God to take over our lives, it is then that the doors that we keep shut will open. Let us stand now together and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, became a man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In response to God's hospitality, we now lift up to the Lord these our needs and intentions. For God's holy church, through practicing racial hospitality, may all people know they are welcome and loved in the sight of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For communities torn apart by conflict, through dialogue and listening, may we come to know the peace that flows from Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those seeking direction and lives of meaning, may they be empowered to take up their crosses and follow the Lord of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation, as we prepare to celebrate Independence Day, may we be grateful to all who have given service to our country free. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our family and friends suffering from illness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased brothers and sisters, especially Woody Robertson, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today we remember Chuck Ruckriegel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious and loving God, grant what we ask of you in faith. For we make our prayer today in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, 
our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so now, Lord, with the angels and the saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all the clergy, the religious, and your people everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Immaculate Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Edward the Confessor, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. amen. 
Savior's command, and formed now by divine teaching, we dare to say, as Jesus taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. O oh my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Behold, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for life eternal. Amen.
Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our announcements for this evening. Um, on Sunday, July 26th at 1230, we will be having our 50-50 capital prize drawing live on Facebook. The tickets for this drawing are $100 each and can be purchased in person after Mass or online or by going to our parish office, uh, I'm sorry, online at the parish office website and clicking on 5050 draw. The ticket sales benefit um, our school and our parish, so your support is greatly appreciated. There are only 500 tickets being sold, and those online tickets can be purchased through Friday, July 24th at noon, and in person here at church through July 26th at the 11 o'clock mass. Thank you. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Thank you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will 